Thank you, thank you, thank you. How can I not be grateful? Lots of gratitude. So anyway, here's the brushes, right? So do you need all of these? No. I'm gonna going to paint the background a lot with these two big brushes. Um, this round one is more soft. That's what I like about it. Doesn't give a hard edge, so it's not going to pull the paint off as much as the flat brush. But I will use the flat brush to put the background on, and um, I will use more detail brushes, which are these two little guys, more so than usual. And I brought in a couple of rounds this time around. Get it? Rounds and rounds. And of course, I'll use some flats. But really. Whatever brushes you need, um, if I were, if I only had flat brushes, I could I could make it work. You can make this work with any brush, but that's what I'm going to pull from primarily. So without further ado, let's get on it, on it, on it. I always suggest um, printing or putting your picture on a screen so you have it as a reference. Um, 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 um. As we paint, since mine won't, I can try. Nah, I'm not gonna. I can't. I, it'll get a mess, so I'm not gonna do that. Back that up. So I have paper towels. I have a vessel of water. Let's talk about water, right? Talk about water for the sake of exa exaggeration. Here is a lovely full vessel of water that maybe I'll stick a brush in, and most likely I won't. If I stick a brush, ouch, in the water, right? I will always come out, I will always bring this brush, place it between what I call my cracker paper towel fold, and pull all residual paint and moisture, as much paint and moisture as I can out of the brush before going forward. I rarely, 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 rarely place my brushes in water. It is warmer, so acrylic paint and all that kind of thing. I will utilize water, I'm sure. And I, am, I do have glaze out, so I am going to use quite a bit of glaze with this piece. So I, I will use the water, but every time, knock on wood, I will place my brush in a paper towel like this and work it back and forth to pull as much of that paint and moisture out of the brush. Moisture, particularly when I'm painting fast, will remove the paint. And we don't want that. However... If um, you need it as a tool because you made an oops, then that works. But if that happens, shoot me a comment because you may run into another problem and I don't want to go into that problem unless it happens. So the first color I'm going to come out with is my phthalo blue and the next is white and then the unbleached titanium. White I have gone with Liquitex. Normally I paint with golden. There's golden and then my golden is still here because Noted hands are yellow, and that's what I found is in my golden. But I normally play with golden and Nova, but for this, um, I'm, I moved to the um, Liquitex. It does work. It works well. Um, yeah, and I just try to make it an economical solution for folks. So with the phthalo blue, this is a lot of fun. How much paint do you put out? So you go like this. There's a couple of dribbles. So literally, I'm not pouring the paint out. I just dribbled some paint out there. And with the um, unbleached titanium, make sure you shake your paints too if you haven't already before use. I'm going to come straight down the middle and there's much more unbleached titanium in here. Can you make that color? Yes. Am I going to go into that? No. Um, unless you shoot me a comment and you need me to. But um, for the most part, I'm not because I don't, I, I just want to go forward. But unbleached titanium is a great color to have in your arsenal. So to start, I'm going to just come in here and move just a little bit around and see how that moves. This phthalo blue, I always talk about mermaid colors sometimes, and it's one of my mermaid colors. It has a, an undertone to it of green, even though it's a blue color. It's, it's transparent, meaning you can see through it. It's not opaque. The light blue is opaque. It covers more. It's more dense. has more particle in it. So now grab your white, and I put some white out there. 
Now that just should scare people. And one, my mantra is paint fearlessly, right? So we're just gonna move this paint around. The whole board will be covered. I do wanna try and capture some of that striation. And what you're seeing me do is create some curvilinear curvature lines, half moons, uh, whatever you, a crescent shape, portal shape, whatever you need, eyeball. I'm going back and forth here and um, kind of having a, an exit points above. So this one may be going this direction and maybe this one in this direction and just moving that paint around. Right. Do I have too much paint on my board? Probably. And if so, I'll remove it. That was really for the sake of commentary. And I have way too much. That was fun. So I'm going to pull some of that off. So um, what was I going to say? The hard part of this painting is patience, right? And what's good about the exercise, this is a planned exercise um, in painting and painting fast and how I paint is we talk about fearless, right? And everybody says or asks me, how much paint do you use? How many, what's a dabble bean? What's a droplet? What's this? What's that? So when I'm going <clears throat> in class, when we're alive, one-on-one -on -one in class, you can see more of what I'm doing and visually identify, I guess. When, um, so now I'm going to pull the paint out of the brush. When we're on the internet, you know, it really is, you're reliant upon my words and the demonstration, of course. But the biggest thing I want to share is that you're only limited by yourself, right? And this is an exercise. This is just play. This is fun. So, if you set in your head an expectation of that you can't fail, if you put too much paint out here like I just demonstrated, then it doesn't matter, right? You just come in and you can wipe paint off. This is a canvas board. It comes off very easily, right? That's awesome. All it does is it messes up your nails and I kind of embrace nasty nails. So I can pull paint off with a paper towel on this board. You can do the same thing on a canvas. Um, to some extent, if the paint, if there's that much paint on paper, you could pick up a lay the top end, right? Just like I can only pick up the top end here. So, so when you're concerned about how much paint, when I'm throwing that much paint around, it really, it's like, what am I trying to accomplish? I'm trying to capture some of this striation. I want to show that this unbleached um, titanium is kind of cool and that we're using it with that thalo, thalo, thalo uh, blue. Ugh. Even here, I can move that paint out of my way. This is a glass piece of glass, a gray underneath it, so you can see the color. But I can move that. If you're working with a paper plate, you could shift out of that paper plate if you wanted. So really it's like, do not, do not, do not, do not paint in fear. So back to the branch, this brush, I'm pulling all that paint out. Thank you for sharing with me, Deb, that you hear me. I'm coming back to some white. There is still paint in my brush. This still is tacky and we're gonna bring in some white. my objective is to keep more of the center area more pale. I do layer more colors in here. But again, the hardest part with this piece is um, playing with the background and to go slow to let it dry somewhat so you can put the next layer on. And then that, of course, is the whole thing going through the process is to slow down, trust the process. I struggle with trust. So me even saying trust the process is rather funny for me to say out loud. So I'm going to come back and bring in some of this unbleached titanium just a little bit. 
to get kind of mute that and I'm keeping it to the outside. Let's go with some more. I'm keeping it to the outside. I am just kind of moving that brush around just a little heavier and putting using dry brush marks or um, with the flat edge to um, create lines to maybe give the idea of grass or flowers, stems, but in the center, it's keeping kind of this eye shape that's more blue in there. Pulling that paint out. I'm gonna come in with some more white here in the center a little bit. Thank you, Deb, for saying you love what I'm doing. So, let's see if I can talk. I'll answer some of your questions. Do you have a pencil and paper handy, Deb? And I'll answer your questions while I paint, maybe. Deb is making a project, doing a project for folks, and so she asked me a series of questions that's supposed to go towards this project. Again, I still have this center area that's relatively darker in the center, and what that's going to allow me is it's going to give me some depth, right? This lighter space that I'm creating really, it's like a portal almost. So let's leave that be. So it's a kind of a blue gray color. And while that dries for just a second, <laughs> she's like, I'm already taking notes. Great. I think you asked me. You can put it in the comments if you want. You asked me my favorite song. Did you ask me my favorite song, favorite artist, favorite musician? Was that one of the questions? So I'm letting that dry just a little bit. Let me get a little tacky. And... Okay, you said yes, you want to know song and color. Hmm, that's hard. What if I told you I don't have a favorite song? I don't have a favorite color. Would that irritate you? Probably. I'm trying to move my water around. I'm going to pick up my cadmium yellow. I do have quite the mess over here what I get for making an example of my page. Um, if you're just joining us, I, I did something to just be silly to show how you can make things go away, even if you have an oops, which means my hands are just awesome right now. So here's cadmium yellow, hopefully. Um, song, 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 song. Um, 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 Goodness, it really depends on mood, who I'm with, what I'm up to. I have my, I don't even have a favorite. I don't know how to answer that. I don't, it just, I don't know. Someone asked me that and you know, you always disappoint folks when you tell them your favorite song and I really don't have one. I really don't. So, and favorite color? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. So here I'm just picking up one of my, um, Number It's a number six flat, and I'm dipping in and grabbing just a little bit of this cadmium yellow on the end of my brush. Here you go. Here's some craziness. I'm dipping it in the water, and here I want to make, I'm going to flick out of the gate to start. It's kind of what I do in watercolor sometimes, if you've ever painted in watercolor with me. There's this curvature right here. So that curve line starts about three inches, two to three inches from my left corner, and it comes to about two inches to my right corner, All right? It's just an arc. So I'm going to try really and kind of splatter strategically. If some goes outside of that arc, that's okay. That's my strategy, and then I'll put some in here, but it's really, I, I know that I'm going to make some floral stuff happen. So this yellow gives me um the ability it's it's uh transparent so I'm back in the yellow grab some water so when i put it down see flick 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 
Some will be larger scale, some will be a little less. I can just put some in here and point your brush. If I need a little more, then I'm going to grab a little more. Right? If you look at what we're painting and I, um, you don't see the splatter, we're going to use that splatter as what I call um, just, you know, inspiration where although we're planning this piece, the piece has already been plan planned out when I initially did it. Um, that just shares with me where the flower is supposed to be. So I like this and all I'm going to do is I'm going to tap in that yellow in spaces. These initial marks um, will not be necessarily our flower. However, over here, I do know I have a large one in the scope of this piece, right? So I know I have this space. So I'm kind of just fanning out that paint. And over here, I know I have one going on over here on this left side, right here. I do know that there's one up here and there's one in center, but all those marks, most of them are going to get painted over. But that's just when you're talking out loud to yourself. That's how I talk. You know, flowers are just, you never see all of the flower. There's always a million of them going on in a flower field. So these marks are just representative of that idea. And often let that yellow set there and I'm grabbing the magenta, the same phenomenon we are going to practice there. So even, um, I will grab a different brush, doesn't matter the size, pick up a little paint, grab some water and try and put some of that magenta in. Can rinse that brush if you rinse it, pull that paint out, pull the water out. I'm going to come back to the first brush, the flat, and just tap in some of that color. Just helps to make this background. So no two paintings are alike, especially when we're doing it very random like this abstract for the design. So you need to be an acceptance of that. I'm rinsing my brush here. <clears throat> I am drying the brush. All right. I'm going to pick up some of that yellow. And here, just because even I'm going to come in and set my brush down and pull up, set my brush down and pull up. Just make the idea of a flower. And... We'll leave that one be. I do know I want one over here, so I'm just going to make some marks. So I will say that less is more with your paint right now. I always have keep a paper towel <clears throat> in my left hand. So if I put place the paint down and I see it puddling too much, I pull out that extra paint. I like the line. I like that when I bring in my brush and it creates line for me texture. I like that. I do that on purpose. So up here I have one. And then I'm leaving kind of some open space. And then over here on my left hand side, my right hand side, sorry, my other left, I'm going to put in, we can get a little more brazen over here on the right because it's going to be a little more powerful over here on the right. What I'm not doing is it's not totally pointed at this corner. It's opening kind of below and to the right. And this floral over here flower is not opening to this bottom corner. It's just above, right? I never open anything at a corner. I never come center on anything. And this one too, this one I just in my eye. So you're thinking about the plane, right? If this, if this was a continuous line, it is not exiting at that corner. It's exiting to the right of that corner. So what's going on there? And then down here, 
right? If I were standing here, there would be some flowers, I'm sure. So I'm just going to own some of those marks. And these won't show up. These are just creating texture. But what it is happening is I'm creating a fan effect. So just off center, I'll even mark it just off center with my finger. Let's call that my center point. And these fan lines where I'm placing these flower marks, the idea, are coming off that center point. It's going to create our energy that's in this piece and very little paint. The most of the paint happened on that the um, background. So two, I'm going to now break out some of the white, place on my board, pick up some of that white. I will bring in some cadmium yellow again just because. And <clears throat> There's some white on my brush. There's some cadmium yellow that I'm bringing in. I'm just coming in over those lines a little bit. And I don't want it to be too heavy. I am being mindful, like I'm starting on my left, coming right. Then I come back. It's almost like creating rows in this fan. That way I can keep track of what's the driest area on the um, canvas. So here I'm going to create some more line in here. I don't, I'm reading your comment, Deb, so this piece with the layering and distractedness of it should cover the rest. Yes, this piece reminds me of watercolor. Yes, so I use this as a, wa a watercolor style. I'm just doing it with acrylic. Um, sometimes I've helped people to transition from acrylic to watercolor this way or vice versa. Some people that are comfortable with watercolor are not necessarily comfortable with acrylic. So here I'm just tapping in again. I'm remembering that I'm keeping that fan energy going on. And when I'm painting like this, I'm very blessed in that I, I, I really get out of self. So the, painting fast even when I'm listening or if I'm taking a class, um, painting fast helps me to not overthink. So if you're painting and you're painting along and I'm going too fast, you can always come back. Sometimes it's better to just watch. And then once, once I'm through the process, come back and do it or pause if you can. Okay, there's those marks. I'm going to pick up some of that um, same brush. I'm just pulling the extra paint, that white and yellow. So some magenta and some pink or some white to make a pink of sorts. And I want a little touch of that yellow. Kind of makes um, a, almost a nice lipstick color, believe it or not, for me. That's funny. So here I'm just going over and it really mutes that um, that initial yellow that we placed in. And what I'm I'm pulling it down straight over. I'm not working the color in. So this color lays on top of the other. But you will see some of that yellow underneath just a little bit. I want to do some of that here on my left as well. And I'm really trying to make sure there's more white on this left side. So the right side is going to be a little more darker, right? And then the left side is going to be more muted, less color. Is the hope. And my flower shapes may change a little bit. My bad if that happens. So up here, I'm going to put a little bit of marks. I really want to keep some of that yellow more so, so I'm going to grab some cadmium yellow. I have not cleaned that brush. I'm putting some of that, that magenta and the cadmium yellow makes a nice kind of orangey color. That's what you're seeing there. Here I'm going to pull in and pull some of that as well. So before I lose this color, 
So that's some of the magenta, some of the yellow. I'm going to come in here and just tap along. Right. Tap, tap, tap. But here on my left-hand side, I really want some pink. So I've grabbed some of the white and some just plain magenta and more white. And I want to come in and make some pink kisses, maybe. Just some mark. A little stronger. And that I am leaving more. So that went a muted yellow line here. And then some little bright pink behind it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mute this color back down. So I'm picking up the muted version. I may need a little white. Oops. Who else is in the party? I see another. I see another face in there. So back to what's my favorite song. Deb, you asked me what's the favorite song. I don't know. I, I don't know. For, about a month ago, I was asked, like, if you could only live with one artist what would it be like what what are things and then that went to three artists so one is earth wind and fire i can't live without earth one earth wind and fire so and when i think of earth wind and fires then i debate between earth wind and fire and the commodores and with earth wind and fire it's the song september i really love that song because it's a happy song let's see let's keep painting so i'm grabbing some more of my white and this is going to really trip people out. So I'm going to grab some white and grab a little yellow. And if you'll notice, like the background is not blue. And we have a blue background. So I'm going to pick up this soft, large brush back here. I'm going to pick up some of that white. All right. Maybe just touch the yellow. Pick up some more white. And I'm going to come in and randomly bring this slowly into the party, right? And where this yellow <clears throat> is been laid in, it's still tacky, right? It takes about four hours for acrylic paint to um, get to its like non-moving state, even though some people would argue that. But if that yellow goes into your sky, if you will, that's okay right if it goes in too much that's okay too you just jerk let it dry and you start over so here i'm really i'm remembering that i had that arc so i had like a, a portal or a rainbow or i created this eyeball portal thing when we first started so i'm remembering that curve line that's here and i'm remembering this one that's down here right so that was all part of the process so that's for capturing line motion. And in the long run, all this, this fan striation that we'll introduce will come in. But you don't have to just keep the steady mark of a, a curved line. That would get rather boring and ridiculous. So we're going to just come in randomly and soft. I am knowingly touching up against all those lovely little flowers. That softens their edges and makes them more happy and natural. And I'm saying happy because, you know, it's whimsical. All things whimsical are happy, hopefully. That's probably not true. And that is true. I've made some whimsical girls that were not happy. So I'm sorry. Here I'm literally going over that pink that's there, right? Get a little crazy and this scares people, right? If you have too much paint, then it's gonna go a little crazy on you. That's why you have to be conservative with the use of your paint. I am utilizing this giant soft big brush um, and I use it very similar to using a pencil, chalk. So when I draw or sketch, if I often normal or I normally paint with flat brushes, 
If I were to have a flat brush, which is what I started out with, and I didn't rinse that brush, I need to rinse that brush, um, it would create hard lines, and I don't want hard lines. I want soft, nice lines. Okay, so if you, I'm reading your comments, Deb. So back to the ranch. Deb asked, Deb has a project going on, and she's made me part of her project, so I'm answering questions as a pain. So we're going to go with favorite song, September, although it's I ha, it's not my favorite song. It's one of a multitude of favorite songs. Um, but since it's September and all of that, I'm going to go with fall colors. I like fall colors anyway. I love earth tones. Although you see me painting with all these crazy vibrant pinks and all that kind of thing, my natural space of like and love is in earth tones. And what's cool is that I make earth tones out of all of these bright colors, which I find to be fun and cool. Okay, this is the background that we're creating, and I really hope people like this, right? So why did I choose this? Normally here lately, since I started back in this game for a minute, I've been painting florals with vases. <clears throat> so my idea was that one, these flowers, and I just keep working this yellow or the white, titanium white, back, back and forth over. I made a mark earlier just off center in my finger point, and I'm fanning and creating kind of um, energy in that direction. But at the same time, I'm maintaining curve in this. So it's complicated and yet simple. So here's my center point. When I'm bringing in my white lines, I'm making sure that I remember I have a curve, curvature to this space. I also understand, and you don't have to do that, that I have fan going on. If you want to, you can, because it just all, already looks super cool, right? That's what I'm doing, and as I'm laying my paint in, that that is my roadmap of how I'm laying in and what I'm trying to create in the process. Okay? Okay. That's fun. All right, I'm rinsing brush because my brush, I'm rinsing. I have a paper towel. And I'm pulling all the residual paint and all the water out of this brush. And I'm pausing, I'm letting that color, that those colors kind of get a little comfortable with each other for a minute before I introduce the next color. So rinsing and Trying to pull the most of that paint out of my brush serves purpose. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. It's very important with this soft one, especially that I get it dry and that I remove most of that paint so that it doesn't stiffen while it waits to service here. So I'm keeping most of that moisture out. It's clean. I'm setting it aside until further notice. I'm going to pick up a round brush. So now we have a great map. And if you need me to, I'm not even going to say that. Forget that. You don't need me to. I'm not going to do it. So I'm going to pick up the round brush. And what size do I have? I don't have my glasses on. And number, where are my glasses? This painting will take more than an hour, by the way. That's why I pulled it up to 2 o'clock. Oh, back to those colors, greens, like dark green, not dark greens. I don't know how to explain it, but greens and oranges, rusts. So I'm picking up a little yellow, picking up a little white, and I want some of that magenta again. And that brush is a little stiff on me. I don't like it, so I'm going to rinse it, get it wet so I can make those bristles a little softer. I obviously didn't clean my brush very well, but I'm pulling that water out. So again, some magenta, some of the cadmium yellow. That makes a really cool um, orange color. I probably need to get some more out here. 
magenta, and some of this white. I want to come over and just set my brush down and pull and turn up. And I have a big puddle. Like normally, I like all that leftover paint. Today, I don't like that leftover paint. So I'm using the round brush because I want more of a soft flower. So from that first pull, I'm using whatever paint is left in my brush to create this fan, if you will. And I do have some coming in this direction. So I'm setting the brush down and doing a little twist and turn, setting the brush down, a little twist and turn, so forth. So I'll wipe or pull paint out of that brush, picking up some of the cad yellow by itself. And here I just want some back color. I want it a little brighter in the background. I'm gonna let that one be. And same brush. And here I just want some on the left, some on the right. So in both cases, these two flowers are a little older maybe. <clears throat> and back here, I'm going to pick up some of that magenta and some pink. Magenta and some pink. And I'll touch a little yellow. And I'm just going to brush some of that in. Dry brush with the teeth. That really, using the tip of this brush now, and flicking as I go. Oops, I touched some of that blue earlier. I'm going to let that dry. Don't do that. Awesome. So up here, just off center, I know that I'm going to lay in um, a flower. So we want it to be the star of the show. If, before I make it the star of the show, let's add some more color so it can help. Mm -hmm. Grab a fine, uh, a detail brush, a small brush. Pick up a little bit of that yellow. And we're gonna mute most of this yellow anyway. So just pull from the start and come down. Pull from each stem, kind of curve. Remember, nothing's kind of straight, right? And here, I really flip that bad boy a little bit. And you can make some marks in here. And I could do this with the corner of my flat brush, but I don't want to scare people. So this is going to just help you to be a little more comfortable putting in some line. And that looks really bright and really like crazy. That's okay. Let's break out some of my fluorescent pink while we're here. And I'm going to pick some of that up and I'm just going to bring it to the party. It's kind of like confetti and you're like, what are those lines? That does look crazy. Well, yes, it does. Rinse that brush, set it aside. Remember that big giant soft brush we had earlier? Pick it up. We're gonna use a lot of white in this piece. And that background is everything. And trusting me is everything. So I picked up some white. And now I'm just gonna come in and same idea that we did earlier, where I'm just softly bringing in some of this white over um, my lines. And if it touches the flowers we just put in, that's okay. We have paint. We can go over it, right? This piece is not bright white in the long run. It gets very muted. And these colors that we just added help with that process. For the sake of, let's see, I want to take some of this white and some pink, even with that big brush. And I just want to make some pink marks. 
So some of that fluorescent pink, that's a very bright pink. I like painting with fluorescent pink. And I'm just going to leave some bright marks on this left side primarily. Okay. And pull that color out. And while we're here, I'm going to pick up some of the white again and come in and just scooch, scruff that paint into the piece. Oops, that was glaze, wrong thing. I'm not bringing glaze in yet. I'm trying to use less glaze, although like if I were doing this for myself, this would all be done in glazes. So I am gonna pick up a little tiny bit of yellow, same brush. I wanna bring some of that yellow in. I'm keeping that same motion going. The reason I use glazes, um, it creates more of a translucency, a glass-like quality to the um, to the paint. It gives it a sheen of sorts, but it allows you to see through. So the same color just becomes, you can create variations of color even with the same color. I just, I really like glazes. It's part of how I'm successful doing with doing what I do. And I am picking glaze up now. So the glaze then is in this brush. Whatever paint I'm touching, it's moving that glaze, that color around too. I'm going to be mindful of trying to stay clear of this area with my glaze. Like here to my left, I'm just going to, I just caught myself. Um, because I'm going to come in and add other paints and glaze does take a little longer to dry. Remember in the center area, we kept it a little lighter down here. So let's add some white in here to remember the space, right? That helps me to remember, and it's going to help me to create the depth that this piece has. I have, I show motion with my little twirly twirly lines and the turquoise. It, that helps me to indicate that that butterfly is flitted around. Okay, I'm going to rinse that brush again. So while I'm here, I'm going to grab some white. I'm back to my round brush. I am picking up some of that fluorescent pink. It's over here. I just want to dab in some of this pink color here. Right? And I'm not even, I'm not naming this flower. If we name the flower, it makes me think I need to do it a certain way. And it makes me think it needs to be a certain look and all the things, right, of rules. And I just don't paint with rules. So it is a flower. That's what we're creating the idea of, is a flower. I'm picking that yellow up, some magenta, and some white right here, mixing it a bit. And I'm coming in here and I'm muting and scruffing. I want some hard lines. This one's going to be a little more powerful. Beautiful. And I know, so this had some curve to it. So I want to create that curve, hopefully. Let's see. So I'm going to pick up the straight at the flat. I'm going to pick up the magenta and a little yellow and a little white and bring my brush down. I just want to darken this side a little bit. That's going to help me later. Picked up the round brush. It's going to help me later to create the idea of curvature, making that side dark. Okay, over here, let's make that a little wider. So I picked up some white. Let's scratch some of that white in. Thank you for hanging out with me, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm rinsing all the brushes. All the brushes. I'm actually putting in the water. Note to self, 
I'm grabbing another paper towel. I did say that this piece is going to take longer than an hour. Part of it is me stalling, so I'm letting layers dry and pulling the water out, pulling the water out, pulling the water out. Okay. Real fast. Let's see. Let's come back and own a line. So I'm going to pick up a detail brush. So a detail brush. We already used it once. I want to grab some yellow. I can even dampen that brush just a little bit. Grab some yellow and just re-own some of these lines in here. Remember there was a little curve over here. Remember that we curved this line. So we remember where those guys are. So I rinse that brush, set it aside. And I'm going to break out my Payne's Gray. So I'm finished with the Thalo Blue. Recommendation is take this away from you. Get it out of arm's reach. I often will pick up by accident. Um, I can, the Payne's Gray or the Thane's, the Payne's Gray or the Thalo Blue respectively. And uh, then I'm not happy when I do that. Very little is all I need. So I really just have a dop out there. So with the, um, you can use the corner of, the corner of um, a flat brush or a detail brush. So in here, there's always a seed pod. So I'm going to just tap in. And I want to see individual marks. Don't worry that if it's not that bold yet, we're going to add more color. So tap in. It's okay if you go over some of the other marks that are there. Tap in, tap, 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 tap. And over here on the left-hand side, do a little tapping. Create the centers, the seed area, the pod area, whatever you want to call this space, right? Kind of like in life, right? You need your center set before you go forward. So we need our center set in order to create, um, to bring the other petals over the tops later. So here too. I really am gonna put a line up here. Thank you, Deb, for your comments. I appreciate you very much. I appreciate that you choose to hang out with me. And I need updated pictures on the project. Not here. You don't have to send them here. But rinse, rinse. And what I mean project, your backyard. So I'm rinsing the brush. Deb and I have known each other for a long time. Once upon a time, I used to be a framing manager at a place called Michael's. But her and I met on the floor in the art department. It was great. I used to teach there. Okay, back to the ranch, and we've been buds ever since. I'm going to grab a little turquoise or the aqua, just a couple drops. Same brush, and I did rinse it. I did make sure it's dry, and I just want to come in and put a little marks in here. A little marks and pull down. Let's see, maybe some marks, some line in here. Same idea that we did before. We're just layering color in. But with this turquoise, it's really going to come up down below. So it's going to, it creates kind of the whole thing. So you can have a little more marks down, and down here. We will go over this with some white. So I'm going to show that right now back to my lovely little round, giant number 12 and some white so here is what I call you know people call it scruffing I call it scooching just to be silly 
I'm keeping my white two away from this area. We're going to come in later shortly and produce a bright flower in here and bring in a butterfly. If I have too much white in there, it could shift my colors dramatically. And I don't wish to do that right now. So here where this turquoise went in, let's come back with the yellow, which is my um, cad yellow, and bring a line over that. Just very, doesn't step away from trying to make it straight all the time, right? Just kind of pull the line down and let it just naturally flow. These type of flowers are in motion usually. So that helps create that idea. Two with that, you can same brush, I rinsed it. You can come back over and you can grab some white and put in there and it really will mute that color. And I'm just barely touching that in. While I have that white in my mind, I'm going to come back to my um, cadmium yellow. Cadmium yellow and some white. I want um, just a little opacity to this, and I want a lighter tone, more like butter maybe, which would be the Hansa yellow. So if you don't have Hansa yellow, I'm trying not to pull it out. Many people don't. So I'm just going to come in here, and I could... Actually, pick up a little of the pink or the um, magenta. That's probably more of the hands of yellow a little bit, maybe. A little more white. It's a little bright for me. That's better. Okay, back here, I want some of that. And this is going to be a little more brighter than our other one, maybe, than the original. We'll see. Then some of that yellow, the cad yellow, all by its little lonesome. Let's bring that in here. Some magenta. I'm just playing with the colors. I don't like that shape. Since I don't like that shape, I'm picking up my fatty brush over here, and I'm just going to... I like this soft, big brush like this. And then mute that edge down is what that does for me. It helps me make it more intent, less purposeful. So I soften that up. And then I can take some of that line from the flower up too. And it just looks better for me. I like it. I like it. Rinsing both brushes. So I've been at this an hour, so I need to hurry it up so we can get all the other butterflies and stuff in. So real quick, I'm going to call just above. So just, uh, that's just right of center. I'm chalking in kind of, um, let's, let's call it a triangle. Let's call it a triangle. So... That's going to be my seed pot area. And it'll go into the flowers. I probably made it a little high. Why am I using the chalk? So I would, I people struggle to draw with a paintbrush. So this helps me to help people. It also helps you to create texture. The paint will pick up the chalk. It creates its own lovely little dynamic and texture when it does, and it really just helps your work. The white chalk, too, will mute the color. It acts similar to a white paint. It's water-soluble. So that will happen. And I want to draw my butterfly. So let's see. And there we go. 
So it's almost like a heart, their wings to me. So that's what I'm going with. So where that chalk line is first, I am going to grab my orange. And I'm pulling orange out, but I'm going to paint this yellow first. So the um, why yellow? Why this yellow? So this is the cadmium yellow. I'm not introducing water. I'm painting right over the top. And I'm owning the lines, right? I'm also starting at the wing, and I'm kind of pulling in a curved line as I come down. And then here in the center, I'll pull in towards the center of the butterfly. I'm okay with this jagged edge over here because check out a butterfly. They're not always perfect. Um, their imperfections reflect their age often. They come out perfect. But here I'm going to pull and make curved lines down the bottom. So those lines help stay in. The, your brain picks them up. But why else? So if I, if I didn't like where that butterfly was, in theory... I could, I could wipe that off much easier than and get rid of that, shed it more easily than I could the orange. That's why. Then I'm coming down my chalk line with my round brush and I'm turning in. And they come and they meet here. So the orange is just really can mute color. And it is more opaque, this orange that I have, meaning it's more solid. Here I can see through things, and it would just be easier for me to cover over if I didn't like it. Okay, and it's a great undercolor. So that's going to be where the butterfly is. Lovely butterfly. Same, same, same brush. And I'm going to start with some of that muted. I'm going to pick up some of the magenta. I am picking up some cadmium yellow and some white. I keep having to put white out. Sorry for my paint, my um, palette. It's pretty warm here, so my paint will dry faster, and I'm not working from a wet palette. So here I just want to come in, and I want single petals coming down. The chalk in here, too, I already said creates texture. Normally, I like these lines, but I'm trying to remove some of the paint but keep the line. I like the variation of color. That's why we're just keeping on going with how the, the brush is loaded, whatever paint is there. And we're going to let that set for a second. While that is setting for a second, I'm going to come back to my... Let's pick up a flat brush. Flat brush and some of this cad yellow. And I'm going to tap it in here and bring that chalk to the party. That makes it, it binds. Binds it to the flower. And I'm tapping up. Make sure, though, with this one, you will tell me immediately put that brush in the water. Rinse and pull the chalk and the acrylic paint. can make a form of concrete, in my experience. It's not fun. So Deb's asking me a question. Is that a wind chime music in the background? No, I have a giant. I have, um, I'm in my, the studio in the backyards, the backyards there out the window and I have a large chime there and I don't know if you're familiar with my fountains or not, but I can see my, I have a Kuan Yin fountain. I have cocoons in my backyard. It's kind of cool. Okay. So while that has, we're going to let that rest for a minute. And while those are resting, I'm going to come over to this flower over here with the round. And I already have some of this magenta and white. Mixed up. 
I just want to come in and drag real quickly some of that down. Right? Not, not really any thought. That way I see some of the paint from underneath left there. And two, I want to come up here and here. Remember, I had a dark space. I'm going to keep some of that dark space here on my right. And I just want to put some additional color in here. Awesome. These two, for the most part, are about finished. So let's just knock them out. Let's grab the, the um, detail brush. Put some yellow marks in there. Detail brush, some yellow marks. Wipe that out, grab some white, same brush. And here on my right, left-hand side, I'm just gonna pull some of this yellow or white, excuse me. And these are just curve, curve lines and it shows with the back darker like this here. Let me point that out. It really helps give the idea or the illusion of shape. So a three-dimensional shape you get. And let's just flick some of that up and over. And underneath, it's usually always darker. So let's create a little dark spot down here just because it'll tell my brain, hey, that's the bottom. That's where all the stuff connects. While that one's drying, I'm going to rinse that. Or not rinse. I'm just wiping that color out. I'm going to grab some more white. Come over here. And I really want to put some of that line up here like this. I like to think that each flower is either singing or it's talking or hollering. Something's going on. They all have their own story to tell. And let's just grab a little more of that yellow. I wiped some of that paint out of my brush and I'm just pulling some of this yellow down here at the bottom. It's not going to be exactly like the other, but it'll give it more dimension this way. Hopefully, I'm going to pick up some turquoise or the aqua. And here I'm going to dot in some turquoise. Here I'll dot in a couple of turquoise dots. And just make sense of this mark. I'm putting some turquoise on this base. And I'll drag it down a little bit. Pick up a little more yellow, put on there. Beautiful. Now I'm going to come over here. Turquoise first. Oops, a little too big. Don't worry if you made it too big of a blob, just let it dry and come back and paint over it. Or stay between the lines and you can cover it like I'm showing. But that is a heavier brush, so I know that and I need to come in later and make petals. So I'm going to let it dry. Here I'm putting a little more black dots in here. And some yellow. Hope everybody's having a great day. Always wonder. So I saw Deb that you're here, and I have two viewers. I always wonder who else is viewing. When they don't place a comment, I'm like, who are you? I would like to meet you. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and put some of this. I'm not going to use paint spray. I'm going to break out the purple. I had diazazine purple on there, so I am putting some purple out.
And just a little bit, I'm going to tap in purple. I want to see some of that yellow come through. And I'm staying clear of my right-hand side, right? I'm keeping this purple more to, or excuse me, I'm staying clear of my left-hand side. I'm keeping this purple more to my right. While I have the purple out, you are welcome, Deb. I know you want to put purple in there to tap in. The thing you want to try to achieve is you want to see the respective color. You want to see the respective dots. It gives the idea of seed pods and all of that type of thing. When you come in with the cad yellow over the top of these colors, because it's transparent, it shifts, that color shifts. And you get the idea of yellow. You may get the idea of a bright green in there. It's fun. And then the seed pods, well, I'm, on, I'm just adding a whole bunch of dots. Okay, so next color, believe it or not, on the butterfly, back to that round brush, I'm going with my fluorescent pink. I almost left this pink. So just like I laid it in, I'm using curved lines as I bring it in. And here, curve towards the back end of that brush or back end of the wing. And leave that alone. Rinse the brush. If you like the pink. Now we have three folks. Yay, on the purple. There's the there's a lot of purple. There's not a lot of purple. There is purple in the butterfly here shortly. If you like the pink, you're welcome to keep it pink. You don't have to shift it to orange and all of that when we shift. So next, I want to grab that round brush. I'm letting that sit. And round brush and some of the hot pink just a little bit and some of my white. And I'm going to mix it over here and make a little light bright pink color and I'm just going to come in and touch in and let that be so I'm pulling that paint out I can come in and do some of that in here and I can do that here just some marks I'm pulling the paint out Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Okay, little dabble do ya. So what we're doing is we're letting the center flower set and rest and we're letting that butterfly set and rest for a minute. So I'm gonna pick up my um, my detail brush and some of this turquoise and I'm gonna like tap in. I'm mindful that the purple's down there and I'm gonna put in some of this color. Love, love. If you need some more purple, put the purple at the edge, maybe it'll give it a little more definition. Maybe tap in on top of some of that turquoise, pull the paint out of that brush, grab the same brush, some cad yellow, just like we did with the others. Tap some of this yellow in, it is transparent. So when it sets on top of the other colors, it makes a myriad of different colors. Okay, now we're letting that dry. I have jeweled centers. Okay, I want to remember that this center flower is the star of the show. So I have yellow on my brush and I like to dance and my flowers like to dance too. So there's her sway. If you think that sway is too much, grab a clean brush, maybe a flat brush, and you can come down and move that line. Yeah, that worked. Nice. That was with a dry brush at that. But what it also does is it gives you built-in contour. It gives you built-in shape. It gives you striation. It gives you built-in shadowing. So when I come back and just tap in some random color, maybe, let's go with turquoise here at the base. And I'm going to pick up 
a just a touch of purple because I'm kind of scary that way. Put it there. And a little more purple, and I'm going to draw that down. And leave it alone for a minute because I used water, so let that be. Let that be for a minute. Beautiful. Let's go back to this pink, the pink guy. It's now going to become orange, so I've laid out some of my orange. I have my round brush again, just like we laid on the other colors. Here comes the orange. I am using curve lines. I am picking up each time. So from the top corner of the wing, curve it in. The base here, the split, is like they say, is a curved line down here. If I continue to rub on that, I'm going to remove the paint. So I'm going to let it go. While I'm here, I picked up my detail brush. Now I'm going to get fancy and put in little pink marks in here because this will get a little more pink. And I want to rub that in now, paint that in now before I start putting in the legs and the body of Mr. Butterfly. And while I'm at it, grab some white. And remember, you don't want, you want to see the varying shades of color. So if you keep, if you keep mixing back and forth, you're going to lose color. And you don't want to do that. So there's the pink. And I want, I want a little more pink. So this is my round brush that I've been using, and I'm just varying where I varying where I'm choosing to pull that color through, and applying a little pressure with that pink, and it blends and it just fuses all the color together. Same brush, same pink, picking it up, and here from this side, right? I'm gonna flick up here from this side. Set your brush down, flick up. See the purple moved. If that scares you, stop. Okay, I, I wiped my brush. Let your purple dry more. For the sake of time, I'm going forward and because that's just how I am. And there. So I'm going to let that be for now. And I'm pulling that paint out of my brush. I'm letting the orange set a minute. So come over here to this guy. Let's pull a little turquoise down this one. I now see three folks in here. I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. Nicole, that's who's one of the Nicoles in the house. That's who it is. Thank you, Nicole. I hope the baby went to sleep. So up here, we're going to create some green marks. Let's create the base of this flower right there. So that you have to just like, if when you're laying your flowers in, if it comes out not exactly like you intended, you just build with it, right? It's like be the flower. Bring some of that green up. This is going to become the base of that flower. Awesome. So rinse your brush. Grab some white, pull down. Here too. This one may get a little lost. That one may get a little lost up here. Let's try and I'm adding the I'm adding more white to this just to have it stand out to contrast against the guy on the right. So, alrighty. Before I move forward, same brush, I pulled the paint. I'm gonna dab in some yellow in on top of this. 
And although I looked like I, oops, now all of that becomes intentional. Now I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to set this brush aside, pick up my round brush again, lay some um, orange, um, excuse me, the, the pink again. So another round of pink. Pulling that. And I've left the back side alone. So we're going to let that be for a minute. So let's start thinking about twirly twirls and the journey of this butterfly. So this round brush. So up here, so butterflies, they bounce or fly all over and they really cracks me up. So I just really want to be light with my touch. It's okay if it touches the stems because we're going to create kind of a three dimensional. I do want some curvature up here and to bring it back up to the butterfly to the base of it. So that works. And it's kind of like think ribbon. So I want some down here. Don't get too carried away. Maybe start at the bottom. There. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So now here's comes some scariness. Pull the paint out of that. I have Payne's Gray still out. If you need to, grab your, your chalk. We're going to create the body. So the lovely... Caterpillar or caterpillar butterfly is in here gonna hang out with this flower. So let's make a larger kind of circle up here and then smaller circles. We're gonna call the smaller circles the body. And I like to curve the little caterpillar inward back towards the flower. I blew the chalk off. That sounds funny. I'm going to come in with the Payne's Gray. Pull the paint out. Um, that chalk and the paint will get ugly. So pull the paint out. Rinse brush over here and clean so now i'm going to just move that paint around and capture all the chalk helps me to connect to the butterfly now i'll hit it with some purple just a little bit especially on the face what i'm calling the face and then it just kind of gets oblong and i'll bring the front of it almost like a, a point coming down towards mm -hmm. towards the flower center. Hello, Yolanda. I see you there. Hugs to you, my friend. Thank you. So then touch in some purple a little bit. And from, so I pull and I get the smallest little brush that you have. What is mine? So I have a number one. And where this is wet, I'm not adding any paint. This is a clean brush, no water on this brush. And their little legs, let's start it from the neck and just pull down. All right? I don't want paint on this because if you don't like it, you can kind of move it and paint over it and start again. And on this side from the opposite, so I'm going to pretend like I can't really see all of the leg. And I'm going to, I am picking up paint just a little bit. And I'm picking up more of the paint's gray than the purple because that type of purple is um, opaque. Someone in my space recently learned that butterflies do have antennas. So 
So I'm rinsing, pulling that um, color out. And real fast, I'm going to come in this direction to show an antenna. And maybe that direction, straight forward. And what I like to do is pick up, let's go with purple again. And here at the base, the bottom of each of these little balls that we created, I'm touching this purple in and just really kind of just allow the purple, allow some little fine line to be in there. Allow those little bumps not to be perfect. If you can. And then make sure they're all connected. We're going to let that dry before we come in with any other color. All right. Now, I'm going to go with the um, Hansa Yellow is what I'm going to put on here next. If you don't have Hansa Yellow, you can um, use the Cadmium Yellow. So I'm just going to pull just a little bit. So that yellow, the pink, and all of that kind of makes an orange. And it's also creating a texture that's not as scary. It's kind of muting all that. With that yellow, I'm going to come over here and bring that line down some just a little bit. I'm leaving some of that pink line at the top. Same brush, same round brush, grabbing some orange. Here's the scary part. I'm putting some yellow on here or some orange on here. And see how because we built those curve marks, those curve habit in those curve lines here and the curve line here that helps you create your three-dimensional shape i did not cover in their entirety i'm going to go back to the cadmium yellow which is more translucent here at the top i just want to marry soften the edges with that color and because if you're in, if you're not achieving the color you'd like, and it's because we're going so fast and the colors are not dry, right? So I apologize. So I'm going to let that set. But what our marks also do is see this extra line that's down here, this line in the center, these lines around where we weren't concerned with perfection on those edges. That helped create um, the, where the butterfly is not flat. It helps put it in motion and give it more three-dimensional shape to it. But two, it's going to allow you the an easier ability to come in first with Payne's Gray. Why Payne's Gray? Why not black? I like Payne's Gray. And I don't like painting with black. And um, the Payne's Gray... And this, it's, um, it is transparent. The diazosine purple that we'll put, we'll add in here is opaque. So if I get heavy handed with this line, with the purple, I'm going to suffer. I'm not going to feel good about it. So I'm coming in with the paint spray first. And I'm making sure that I outline do the whole outline. Underneath. Trying to use a light hand, not a heavy hand. I don't want a wide line. Okay, so up here, back to this translucent kind of, there's, we're going to create more depth up here. So I'm using my detail brush and I just tapped in. Some of that color and you got to kind of be bold with it. It is heavy on my end. You don't have to place it as heavy as I did. 
I went heavy just for the sake of saturation and time. You can pause, let it dry, and come in with multiple layers. Here, I want a little wideness, like angle. And I'm cleaning my brush in between my, this is wet. So normally I would let it dry more. This guy connects kind of to his neck. Let's just call it a neck. Poor little guy. I'm making sure that there is some gap space in here just because I like to do that. Meaning some white space. In here, this guy, let's give it some shape, some character. I like characters. While I'm here, I just wanted to create the idea and black marks help people think. Um, monarch. So I just created a black mark. And here I want a black mark. want to grab some purple now. I'm looking to see if there's any questions. I know I'm probably going fast. So I do have a question. I've noticed that you guys have been present, the same people here, the last few videos. So if you're there still, sorry, I didn't turn that off. If you're there still, Put um, a comment on your preference. Do you prefer the painting on the wall or here? In looking at it, I was thinking that, you know, it may be fun to, to be visible, but as far as effectiveness, it may be more effective for me to paint like this. So let me know. I appreciate your feedback. So I'm tapping in some more purple. I'm letting that color up there rest. Hope everybody's having fun. Tapping in some more purple. And rinsing that brush, pulling the water out, setting it aside. And I'm gonna grab some white, more white. I already have turquoise out. I'm gonna grab some of that turquoise and over here. So I th I want to think that this lovely. I'm gonna try and follow the line the best I can and own some marks in this line, not in their entirety necessarily, but just to give the idea, the illusion. And then that looks like everything's bright and turquoisey. So you come in, and further away it is, there's less color. So I want to pull that tiny bit down. See how I can widen that mark out that just gives more motion to the line. It looks like it's wrapped around the flower. So. That's fun. So then you can lose part of the line in there, come back and find some. It's kind of funny how a butterfly can disappear. It's kind of funny how a caterpillar can disappear. So I'm looking at comments. Let's see. Comment is, I love you, but seeing your hands at work really helps me. Before. Yes, awesome. I need to hear that because that's what I want is to help you with your process. So don't be concerned about having to see the entirety of this 
ribbon or line that gives the indication of motion. And I'm wrapping it around. I'm going to call that done, that part. Um, I want a little more turquoise down this. Kind of unifies those and wherever I touch that ribbon, I can come back over. You can always let it dry and come back and put more color on or off, however you need to. Oops. Cool. So where are we at? 335. So I'm grabbing my um, white. Actually, I want the purple first. I'm grabbing purple. And I want some purple up here. You don't have to. If you're happy with Payne's Gray, you don't have to put purple in. I'm just touching in. Some, I put the purple in, in completely on some of the lines. The circles in here, are these marks, I'm just putting a few. A few marks of purple. And down here, let's do a couple of dots of turquoise, maybe. Followed by maybe a couple of marks of white. If there's too much white, just move it. And if you think that it's too white, you can come back with your paint gray and make sure you don't move your brush back and forth and blend it. It will turn gray. I'm trying to drop color in. And I'm varying between purple and the paint gray to just mute some of those big drops of white I placed in here. And pull that color out. I'm not picking up water. And here's some white. And we can make some dots. Pick up in between. My paint is wet, so I'm making sure to drop the paint in, pull the color off so I'm not creating violet up here, a light. And here I'm going to drag some of that down. And then come back with some of the paint gray. And on this edge, clean my edge up. Awesome. So, real fast, we're letting that all dry. I'm going to come back to this guy. That should be dry, dry, dry. And I'm picking up the round brush, some of the white, and just a smidge of magenta. I probably should lay some more out. Just a tiny bit. I really want it predominantly white. And put some marks in here. Grab just a touch of purple on my brush. And I'm flicking over with the purple from the base. If you want more purple in there, you can grab a little purple, grab a little white, and a small detail brush. Really make some really light lavenders. Or you could I could have done it beforehand. You could put some mark in here, but I'm choosing not to. 
and then do this flick action right here. And I'm coming behind with white because that's a little bright. So this guy over here is predominantly white. And let's just go for it. So here. So now, since we had that, the seed pods in, they're dry. That's cool. So let's really cover it. But what you can do, and I'm just going to demonstrate. I'm not going to go through the whole process. But you could come in and touch up some of these marks. I'm using purple right now. I like purple. And that will lift and brighten those for you. I'm going to do that over here with the purple and the Payne's gray on this side. So then I can, that first motion that I did not care for so much, kind of made that go away. I'm pulling that color out. I'm going to let that one dry a bit. Maybe I'll pick up some white and come down here and just kind of turn make some marks so it gives it the attitude of to the left attitude is everything positivity so detail brush some white here's where people really have a struggle so i'm going to come in here and i think we should be singing flowers so whoop all right set your brush down pick up some white brush down pick up some white we're flicking just a little bit Oops. So if you're like me and you just use too much white there, now I just need to finish my other marks. Let me finish my process first. Then I'll come in with some paint spray and set on there. And I want some white marks in here. I may struggle since I put purple. This guy really matters to me down here. It's almost like they're communicating. Right? They have a story to share. All right, last and certainly not least, you guys are probably going, will you please be done? I'm going to pick up just a little bit of my um, cadmium yellow. I'm mindful that some areas of this are wet. Sorry. Then I'm going to pick up some wine. And that's about as close as we're going to get in this time. And one last, let's do one last flick over here. So I'm ground brush. I have some pink, and it is the fluorescent pink, and I just want to make one more up here. There. And if you choose to, use your number one. Grab a little paint. And I am Cat. That is Cat with a K catfurrow.com and I'm going to show my face to you now 
It's been so much fun playing with butterflies, rainbows, fairies, and ribbons in my garden with you. Woo! So, okay. Bump, 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 bump. Here we are. So I'm back to the ranch. Hope everybody had fun. So why am I teaching these again? Because these flowers, I can actually use the concept and the style of that flower in the vase work that I do. I do all kinds of big giant flowers and all kinds of mixed media. But my process is paint fearlessly, use a lot of layers, use a lot of colors. And I, I practice drawing. So when I draw, if I can draw it, I can paint it. So practice your style of drawing and then when it, it will translate to a painting. That's what I was trying to share all that a bag of chips today. But love and hugs to you. I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.